Good morning and welcome to Homepage, a public affairs feature of 93.7 K Country and Wind FM 92.5, 95.5 and 107.9. I'm Kathy Dugan and my guest this morning is Ocala Mayor Kent Gwynn. Hey. How are you? I'm doing good. Now we're in phase two statewide. You made a pretty big announcement last month and that was that Ocala will not be enforcing the rules for businesses to reopen amid the COVID-19 pandemic despite the governor's phase one restrictions. Well, now we have restaurants back in business, gyms, salons, people can gather. Tell us right. about why you came to that decision to not enforce the governor's restrictions. Sure. Um, so I, I checked with a few people before I did that. I mean, I just didn't do it, you know, uh, without thinking it through. Um, I talked to our uh, city attorney, Pat Gilligan. I talked to um, Representative uh, Anthony Sabatini, um, who's also an attorney. And had been dealing with some of those issues uh, himself as his lawyer uh, role. Um, I spoke to uh, Matt Staver, who runs Liberty Council. Um, you know, um, and I spoke to a gentleman named uh, Russ Lapierre, uh, who represented us when we did our uh, lawsuit when the atheists were suing us for you know asking our community to pray mm-hmm. uh, on the square. So. You know, I spoke to those four attorneys, and I said, you know, I said, me just reading it, and I'm not a lawyer. You know, I, it looks like this is unconstitutional to me, and they said it absolutely is. You know, it restricts people's freedom of assembly, uh, freedom of religion, you know, and uh, equal protection. You know, and the, um, I can't remember which amendment was, I think it was 14th. But, um, you know, one of the things, you know, uh, we do in the city you pay an occupational license tax, whatever we want to call it. We call it a tax now um, to do business within the city limits. So, and they are all different rates. Mine might be seventy-five dollars. Uh, yours might be a hundred. Whatever business you're in, but we both pay that thing. The government said you can be in business and you can't be in business, but yet I pay money uh, to operate my business. And that's against the law. That violates your equal protection. Here's something that, you know, and even the governor says that this, um, that the Constitution doesn't get suspended during all of this time. So on, let's say, December 31st of last year, if 12 people were gathered on the square within six feet from each other talking, and I called Chief Graham up and I said, Chief, there's 12 people down on the square, you know, in a circle, and they're real close to each other and they're talking send the police down there and break that up. He would say, Mayor, are, are you crazy? <laughs> you know, they have a constitutional right to yeah. do that. Freedom of assembly, freedom of speech. And um, I was like, okay, but now fast forward, you know, right now, um, that's against the law. But yet the Constitution is not suspended. You know, you can't assemble more than, what was it, 10 people and you have to be six feet apart. I mean, that's, that, that's the absurdity of what I was saying. And, 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 and with the restaurants, it was at 25% when it started off. And I told them, I said, look, I said, we're, we are not going to go around, you know, as a police department counting heads and saying, you know, uh, you've got, um, you know, 40 people in here. You're going to have to ask seven to leave. You know, it's right. you know, more than 25. We're just not going to do that. Um, you know, we, were, <clears throat> we were getting calls. An officer told me he got a call, uh, dispatched to a call. Uh, of a neighbor who was, um, their neighbor was having a birthday party for their four-year-old, and the one neighbor felt that there were too many people there, uh, and they were too close together, and wanted us to do something about it. I, I told Chief, I said, you know, a, we're not going to do that, and he said, yeah, Mary, he said, they're not even going to get those calls anymore. They're not even going to be dispatched. So we've got, you know, unfortunately, you know, real crime to deal with, and and fight and, you know, all the things that were going on pre-COVID-19 are still going on that have nothing to do with that, the robberies and, you know, all those things. Drug sales were doing a real good job. Crime's down 20% from last month to this month. And overall, you know, year-to-date is down, you know, 10%. So we're doing good on that front as far as fighting the crime. But, you know, um, this this um, this order uh, that the governor has, and the governor's doing a great job with just, Happen to, you know, disagree with him, you know, on this. And his order is really not really that much different than that I've seen. I haven't read the other one uh, than the other ones around the state. So it's just um, it's just not right. I, you know, as the mayor, you know, I, I put my hand on a pen on the Bible and raised my right hand. And, 
you know, swear to you know, take an oath to protect and defend the Constitution. And this is part of it, and this is the this is a chance they get to protect and defend it. And I have to speak out. Uh, might not be popular, but you know, I got to speak out. Well, what were you hearing from small business owners, uh, many who have been in Ocala for decades, before deciding not to enforce the orders? I mean, were were you hearing from them about it? Oh yeah, I would have individual. I'm going to say I don't want to identify who, who okay. that individual is, but individual you know stood in front of me and cried and said, "Mayor." She goes, I am lose. I, I will lose everything I've worked 30 years for uh, if I can't open. That I never thought it would come to this. And, um, you know, at 25%, you know, you're losing money. At 50%, you're breaking even. And, uh, you know, it needs to get to 100% real quick. You know, the other thing, too, is, you know, like with the mask, you know, you go in some businesses, there's masks. You go in some businesses, there's not. Some people have them on, some people don't. You know, if people feel safe and they feel like that they need to wear a mask, wear a mask. You know, that's perfectly fine. You know, uh, if I don't want to wear a mask, that's fine too. Uh, but we need to, like, not have this attitude, well, you, know, you don't have a mask on, you're killing people, or, you know, I am, or, it's just, you know, I mean, I got called murder, and, oh. you know, all these things in emails. You know, for for um, you know, not enforcing that order, so that we just need to kind of like you know take it down a notch and and uh, you know respect each other's you know um, what they want to do as far as you know protecting their safety. Have you been getting good feedback now from the residents and business owners since the city's kind of trying to operate normally? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, when I did that, they I got I got emails from all over the state, all over the country. Um, you know, thanking me for, for doing that. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, restaurants, you know, especially, uh, have, uh, are doing better. They thanking me for 50% now, you know, hopefully the movie theaters will, you know, open back up. Uh, felt terrible for that Epic theater that opened it back up. Eighth for us, as soon as they opened, you know, this came along, Yeah, you know, and they had to close. So excited about seeing that getting, uh, back open. You know, I want to go to church. Uh, you know, yeah. Uh, I've got a, a helping the individual out that died. You know, several weeks ago. Oh. You know, they haven't even been able to have their funeral. We're trying to plan that. We'll probably end up doing it outdoors. Uh, but so all those things that just really it's been hard on people. Um, it, so, but yeah, it's, wow. It, it, it's been tough. You know, and now you know we we sit and we watch you know TV and we see all these bad things that are just going on and you know places like you know New York, LA, mm-hmm. Minnesota, and all these other cities around the country, and Washington DC, uh, seeing, our, seeing our country destroyed um, is uh, is terrible. You know, yes. everybody has the right to protest that their the First Amendment right, and mm-hmm. I, I encourage them to exercise that. Nobody's got a problem with that, but this this violence, this rioting and things like that, that has nothing to do with protesting. No, no, um, no. M- many of those people probably have no idea who George Floyd even is or, you know, what even happened. Um, so that that needs to end and the president needs to end it however he needs to end it within the confines of the Constitution, you know, but uh, but it's got to end. We this, this just can't go on. You were there. You spoke to those who gathered to, to demonstrate in Ocala last Sunday in response to the killing of George Floyd. Um, what did you share with them while you were there? Um, I just talked to them about, you know, thanks for being here. You know, exercise your, your right, um, you know, behave, you know, and they were all uh, the ones that I talked to, you know, were all, all good. You know, they were passing out water, picking up trash uh, around the square and you know, everybody was uh, very, uh, very polite, you know, except for one individual. And, uh, and he was trying to stop the speaker from, you know, speaking. And so we arrested him, he, you know, um, did some to one of our police officers. So that didn't end real well mm-hmm. for him. So, um, but other than that, and, and, the, and the police got a standing ovation from the crowd and cheered him for oh. arresting him. He was, he was bothering all the crowd while they were trying to, you know, protest, we kept harassing them. And uh, so, and, but 
you know, out of, out of the whole day. That was the only problem. You know, it's, good. it's amazing because here in Ocala, here in Gainesville, um, portions of north central Florida where there have been protests, it seems like there's only been like one bad apple that shows up. Everybody has been amazingly so respectful. I mean, we live in such a great community in a great area that does that now. And it, it amazes me. So that one person, I mean, bye bye bad apple, right? <laughs> Right, right. Um, yeah. we're, we're wondering now, at what point does it go from protesting to rioting? Well, you know, we, you know, Keith Graham and I have talked about this, and I, I'm a, I'm a big, you know, uh, Mayor Giuliani fan, and, um, and, and actually, you know, uh, some of the policies we have with broken windows and things that, you know, we've enacted, you know, the way he policed you know, New York and, um, you know, turned it around. I mean, I've, we, we put in place, but, you know, the first person that throws a rock, the first person that does any kind of violence, just like this, just this individual, you know, we went in, we extracted him from the crowd, we arrested him, and off the jail he went. That's exactly what we'll do. I mean, we're not going to tolerate anything uh, like you see on, on uh, TV, just none of it. Uh, we will do, you know, whatever we need to do to stop it. Uh, that's just not going to happen in our community. And, you know, here's the thing, too, you know, Chief will talk about, about this, and, you know, in the same way, you know, he's been with the city for a long, long time, I think 37, 38 years. Mm -hmm. You know, these relationships that we have, you know, with people in the black community, I mean, they've been developed over, you know, mine 20 years, 21 years, you know, as a councilman, as the mayor, and his, you know, 37, 38 as, you know, working with the police department. So we feel very, very comfortable with the people that live here, people we have relationships with. You know, they're not going to do anything uh, like what you're seeing on TV with a rioting and stuff like that. It's going to be people from out of town that are going to come in and uh, try to do that. And quite frankly, you know, A, I hope it doesn't happen, but B, if it does, I think the people that live here uh, will stop them. Uh, people in the black community that they're protesting with, they will stop them from doing that. And we'll say you're not going to do that in my city, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I, I'm very proud of the people, uh, you know, that live in our community that, um, you know, are exercising their First Amendment rights. You know, I really am too. We live, and I say this to so many people, we live in a really special community because you don't see this everywhere where people really do want to help each other. People really do want to get along. People don't want to see businesses destroyed. And it's just amazing. I mean, I, as as the mayor, that's got to be such a good feeling for you. It, it is. And, you know, one of the things that I do, I'm, I serve uh, on uh, some committees on the U.S. Conference of Mayors. So, you know, I've told people, you know, many of uh, us this other day, many of these mayors that you see, uh, these cities that you see that are, you know, uh, being disrupted, uh, you know, Los Angeles, uh, New York, uh, D.C., you know, some of the other ones. Yeah, I sit around tables with those mayors. I know how they govern. I know, I hear them talk. This mayor of uh, of Minneapolis, you know, I've met, I've, I've had dinner with. Um, so that's the way, that's the way they govern. Uh, what you're seeing is, 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 is how they, that's their viewpoint. They, they, they don't have a problem with that happening. They allow that to happen. Uh, we don't allow that to happen. We won't uh, allow that to happen. But um, I always also, I brag on my community. I say, you know, look, I say we have the, one of the most caring, compassionate communities you would ever want to be in. You know, if someone has a problem, you know, we always come around, you know, to help that individual. If we know about it, I mean, sure. you know, we're pretty good at get, getting the word out, you know, that, hey, you know, this business or, you know, Carl over Interfaith needs some food, you know, we rally around, you know, uh, that, we have food drives and, you know, people that have, you know, cancer and have, you know, medical bills or something that they need, need to pay, you know, we have, you know, um, events to raise money for them and walks and et cetera, et cetera. But, uh, and I think, I don't know how many nonprofits we have here in Ocala, but a lot of them, so they all do good work for a variety of different, uh, things that uh, they're supporting so yeah i can't say enough good things about what a compassionate caring community we are and and you're what a fourth or a fifth generation ocallan this is this is your home yeah i mean um this fifth generation my family came here back in 1850 
So, you know, we've got some skin in the game, and, uh, <laughs> so to speak. And so, yeah, I mean, this is, this is my, my city, my, my community. And, you know, I mean, I'm not, I'm not leaving here. And, you know, this will always be home. So, you know, I gotta, I gotta take care of it no matter what. Uh, I, I'm curious. I've been hearing a lot, and and you know, it's troublesome that there are some towns, not here, obviously, that want to defund the police department. How do you feel about that? You know, I saw that uh, today on uh, State Los Angeles. I uh, was talking about taking 150 million dollars, you know, out of their budget. The uh, um, city of Minneapolis was talking about getting rid of their police department, which is just. You know, mind boggling. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, as far as like putting money in the community, I think we're gonna just about to put build that um, Mary Sea Ridge Community Center will spend, I think it's already set aside and funded. We're called to $14 million for that. We're going to uh, build a new police department, uh, I mean, a police substation and fire substation on MLK and kind of state of the art community uh, well, a community center and basketball courts there uh, that'll be really really amazing wow uh, we're building uh 1200 home development over where fine oak golf course was mm-hmm. private sector is doing that one uh, but you know we gave them the land so we're probably putting in you know like 20 million dollars back into the community right now that's awesome so, so we're doing that plus we have you know our police department so there's no lack of funding um uh, as far as, you know, taking money uh, out of the police department and putting it in, uh, um, you know, uh, the black community. And that's what, you know, um, that's what Los Angeles was doing. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think if you didn't have a police department, what would that, I mean, what would our city, what would our country look at, look mm-hmm. like? There, there is no 911. I mean, that's you know. what I was thinking, too, when I'm hearing about this. I'm like, hmm, you know, as you know, as the mayor, what you think. And, I, you know, as an individual, I'm, I'm going, uh, I I have several police in my family. And I just, I can't imagine a world without police officers, good police officers. It would be complete anarchy. Mm-hmm. Everyone could do what they want. Uh, you, you know, you could rob banks, you could rape, pillage, and mm. kill, and there'd be no one to stop, stop wow. it. Wow. for the people exercising their Second Amendment rights, you yeah. know, we would just be shooting each other, killing each other. But I don't wow. think that's ever going to happen. So. Mm. Well, we've seen so much growth in Ocala, which is so exciting. What is your vision for the continuing growth of Ocala? Well, you know, um, there are, not within the city limits, but right at the edge of it, and that's another thing, you know, we're, I think, maybe looking at you know, doing some annexation you know, here in the not distant future, but, you know, growth is uh, uh, going to happen. It's got to be good growth, mm-hmm. and I think that's what, you know, we're seeing. Um, you know, uh, it'll be, you know, we've got more and more companies coming in. Uh, there will be people, you know, when the World Equestrian Center opens that will see our community, uh, and they, uh, they'll they like it. Mm-hmm. And so they're going to want to um, move to Ocala. I know that one of the things with the hits, when they have that show, I, I, I see people in town. I know they're, you know, uh, participants in, <clears throat> in hits and they're riding. And I'll, I'll thank them. I'll say, hey, thank you guys you know, for being in town. And, you yeah. know, um, hope you like uh, you know, our community and welcome. And, and they'll, you know, kind of chuckle and go, well, Mayor, we live here now. And I'll say, really? Yeah, wow. We, bought a house or we'll have a house in, you know, up in the Northeast and we have one here, but this is home base now. And, you know, we travel from here and do all our shows and stuff. So yeah, you, there's, there'll, there will be not only with what World Equestrian Center is doing as far as their, you know, residential uh, uh, part of that, that development, but just other places all around the city. Mm-hmm. People will go, oh, which I just want to be in a town. So, you know, they're going to be buying homes. And you know it's going to be um, it's going to be um, something else. But I, I said the other day, well, two things. I think you know that World Equestrian Center you know puts the exclamation uh, point on uh, mark on uh, the uh, horse capital of the world, mm-hmm. and um, that World Equestrian Center I think will redefine you know uh, Ocala, Mary County. Uh, the type of community that we are. 
And we're already seeing a big rejuvenation downtown with a brand new hotel, parking garage, new apartments, and new restaurants yeah. coming in. Yeah, and you know, I'm talking to a developer out of Tampa that had been working on a on a very important project uh, that he wants to do involves three city blocks. Yeah, three city blocks um, downtown. And he called me the other day, or probably a month ago, and said, "Hey, I'm." I'm still interested in doing that project. Let me, you know, uh, get some things cleared up here in Tampa. And um, my, you know, financing arm of, you know, the project is still interested in doing the project. We were up in Ocala, he said, not long ago when we're, uh, he said, I brought them up and they're they're all in. And so he said, give me to, you know, June, July, and I'm ready to go. Uh, so you'll start probably start seeing, you know, at least, Hopefully they'll publish in the paper some, you know, some activity that will you know be beginning again in uh, June, July. And people will kind of pick up you know where they left off, which which is exciting. You know, um, we just need to get all this turmoil and stuff around the country to calm down. I'm sure the sure the markets, you know, don't like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, I don't know what uh, what's going on with that. I think you know some of this thing market's been up a little bit, but overall, that's not that's not good for the... Something that I love that I see you do when I'm in Ocala, I see you walking around town. You'll walk to go get lunch. You'll you'll walk over to the police station. You walk all over your town, and you get in the way you're walking, I can tell just how much you love this city and how much you love being mayor of the city, and it's, it's really refreshing to see that you do that. Yeah, I mean, I do. I mean, I, you know, I, I mean... I get nine hundred and fifty dollars a month to do this job, uh, mm-hmm. and so I have a day job. <laughs> you know, the insurance and investment business, but uh, but no, I mean I just love being the mayor, and uh, you know I, I I love you know dealing with people. You know um, I, I give out my cell phone. You know, if you call and ask for the office of the mayor, you get my cell phone, um, and people respect that. I don't get you know. All you know, a bunch of calls that are, you know, um, you know, people just, you know, calling to bother me or anything like that. Mm-hmm. They're true, genuine, you know, calls that people are, hey, I've got a problem there. I, I, I need your help. And, you know, it may be a city, county, or federal problem, state problem, you know, but, you know, I'm, I'm able to put them in contact, you know, with the right people that can help solve their problem. Wow. And, um, you know, being the mayor is, you know, you have to genuinely care about the people that that you serve uh, to uh, to do that, and uh, and I do. Uh, and you know, whether whether you're you know a billionaire or whether you're living in a ditch, I'm going to treat you exactly the same way. I'm going to yes sir, no sir, yes ma'am, no ma'am. You know, treat you with respect. I'm going to help you. I'm going to answer your call. Uh, I'm going to do all those things because I mean, I feel like. You know, uh, I'm a public servant, and that's what public servants are supposed to do. Yeah. Uh, whether you're, you know, a congressman or a state representative or, you know, a councilman or, or a mayor or whatever it is, I mean, that's what they talk about when they talk about, you know, government, you know, other people, by the people, and for the people. That's what that means. I mean, I, I represent the people to the city. Uh, I'm not the city. Uh, I'm one mm-hmm. of them. I'm one of us. And you did run for Congress. You came back because you wanted to be in this community and helping us. Where do you see yourself after your run as, of, of mayor is done? Do you want to move on or do you see yourself retiring? What do you want to do? <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I don't. <laughs> My view of retiring is probably a little bit different than, uh, than probably other people. No, I'm just going to keep, keep working and keep, uh, keep doing things. But no, you know, um, you got redistricting coming up here shortly, mm-hmm. uh, so there may be, you know, there's talk of being another congressional district uh, here in North Central Florida. So, I mean, I, I, I live in the district I live in, which is, you know, Joho's, I think, by just a few blocks. Uh, I used to be in uh, Congressman Nugent's uh, district. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, who knows what's going to happen, but... You know, and I haven't, I haven't ruled out, you know, running for Congress. Um, you know, again, you know, when, when it got time to, um, you know, sign a letter to, um, either resign to run or, you know, withdraw my name, 
I was about 15 or 20 minutes from, you know, doing that. And, you know, phone was ringing off the hook, Mayor, I need your help. Mayor, I need your help. Mayor, I need your help. You know, <clears throat> and I knew that if I wasn't there, um, these people that were calling me, they would not be helped. Wow. Uh, and I thought, you know what? It just isn't the time. And, um, you know, and I hadn't raised the money that I needed to raise. I mean, I could have qualified, but after that, with all this stuff going on, you can't go to have lunches. You could, restaurants were closed. You couldn't, you know, knock on doors. You couldn't do all those things. Um, but, you know, things have changed a lot, you know, since then. But, you know, I just felt that, you know, I need to finish my term as, you know, uh, mayor and, you know, figure out, you know, what to do from there. So, you know, there'll be a lot of, lot of opportunities that will open up once I'm, you know, not mayor. And uh, I'll, I'll figure out what to do from that. I mean, people are, are asking me now, you know, about that. But it's a little early to, yeah. you know, figure that out. I figured I'd ask. Why not? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's very obvious how much you love your city and how much you love the people here. Um I was actually surprised when I talked to Jackie from your office. She's like, well, here's the mayor's cell phone number. I'm like, am I allowed to have this? Is this okay? <laughs> so when he just brought that up, it's like, that's wonderful. Well, and I will tell you, uh, Mayor Suarez uh, of Miami, is one of the things that was happening when, when I was getting out of the congressional race, uh, there was a gentleman uh, who was trying to get a plasma uh, donation uh, for his uh, – I think in law, and uh, he had called Mayor Flores down in Miami. He had done a plasma donation to help someone out, out in St. Petersburg that had the, had the uh, virus. And he had called down to his office and he said, uh, Well, if you'll get your mayor to call our our office, I'll work with you and try to help you out and tell you how it's done. Or, you know, he said, I'll do it myself if, you know, uh, it's, uh, if I can do it. So, um, I called his office and they said, yeah, here's his cell phone. He wants people to have, have his cell phone. Wow. And I said, oh, a guy like me, you know. Mm-hmm. And there's another uh, Senator Gruner, uh, head of the Republican Party uh, here in Florida. He gets his cell phone number out. So, you know, and I, I, I like that. You know, that's, that's what I feel, you know. That's what you're supposed to do. People should be able to reach you. Um, so, but, you know, there's not... A lot of people that feel that way, elected officials, but, you know, I just feel like you should. Mayor, final question. We have residents that want to know in Ocala what they can do to help our community. Uh, well, gosh, there are, you know, lots of things, you know, uh, you could do. I, I mean, I would tell you to reach out to your favorite charity, reach out to um, probably think, think, you know, maybe a United Way and you know, touch base with them and, Find out, you know, what some of the needs are in Ocala. I know there's still, you know, food needs. Um, you know, we're, you know, over at First Baptist Church, they have a food drive, I think, on Saturdays a lot of times. Mm-hmm. And um, I know they, they do that. So I would reach out to, you know, some of the churches and call them and, you know, ask, you know, is there anything going on that I can help? If they're on Facebook, you see different events that are going on, you know, all the time, community events. So um, I would just, you know, do that. Um find out how you can help out and it doesn't have to be money you can volunteer your time oh yeah you can stand in the line and hand out food uh you know people will appreciate that you know the other thing too is just you know if you've got neighbors you know reach out to your neighbors especially elderly neighbors you know just you know check on them how you doing um uh, you know and anything i can do for you, anything i can do to, to help you out um and um uh, just you know keep your eyes and ears open and pay attention to what's going on around you It'll be pretty obvious, you know, what needs are that you can help with. Mayor Gwen, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. I It is so appreciated. No, thank you. I appreciate it. My guest today has been Ocala Mayor Kent Gwynn. Homepage is presented as a public affairs feature of 93.7 K Country and Wind FM 92.5, 95.5 and 1079. Your comments are always welcome and you can email me at homepage at ncfmgroup.com. You can also listen to Homepage by going to our websites at 937kcountry.com and windfm.com. I'm Kathy Dugan. Please join us again next Sunday for Homepage.